few years ago on October 23rd, I had the rare opportunity to soar to the edge of space in a U-2 reconnaissance aircraft. I had intensified my training for two months, lost a required 29 pounds, checked onto the base for systems orientation, and I was fitted into my 130-pound spacesuit, climbed aboard the aircraft with my commander, and we took off and immediately climbed, rapidly climbed, to 17 miles above the Earth's surface, where for five hours I sat in the sounds of silence, looking at the breathtaking curvature of the Earth, gazing into the endless blackness of the universe, pondering eternity and my place in it. And with an unobstructed view of our planet, I teared up as an eyewitness to the words of Einstein that the mind once stretched can never return to its original dimensions. Realizing why Einstein also wrote that the concept, although the concept of a master organizer and a supreme being is, is complex, we must embrace the mindset of a young child who walks into a large library and says, surely someone must have written all of these books. And within minutes, I too agreed that surely we are more than mere mortal beings living on a small planet for a short season. And because I could see the thin, delicate ozone where the blue turned to black, I also realized that it's not my air, my water, my world. It's our air, our water, and our collective stewardship to take better care of our Mother Earth and of each other. Needless to say, this high flight changed my life forever. How? Why? It forever changed my perspective, which controls everything that we believe and do. Let me give you some quick examples. Is your glass half empty or half full? Or is it refillable? It's perspective. If all of us are looking at the same rainstorm and someone complains, what a horrible day, and someone else exclaims, what a wonderful day, the weather did not change. It's perspective. Are you tall or short? Fast or slow? Successful or unsuccessful? Says who? Compared to what? It's perspective. And let's say this side of my hand is painted white and this side is painted blue. What color is my hand? White, blue. Who is right? You all are, depending on your perspective. So in order for us to communicate at the deepest, most authentic levels of empathy and total understanding, we must be willing to come around on the other side of the hand to see the other person's perspective and acknowledge that yes, it is white or blue, which turns every argument about who is right into agreeing on what is right so we can move forward together. Awestruck in the atmosphere and environment of space, I was reminded that we don't see things as, as they are, we see things as we are. Which is why and when I created my three-step process I call the art of significance, where I turn the word art, A-R-T, into an acronym that guides us through awareness, refinement, and transformation. It's the process and formula that I use with organizations to up-level their culture, train their leaders, and actually build them into a high-performance team. Awareness of our current perspective, refinement of our passionate purpose, and transformation through quantum improvement. Awareness of our current perspective is clarity of self, staying present in the process, which means that before we can ever make a move, we must first identify and acknowledge exactly where we are right now. It's like my Aunt Lucy, who when she was 63 years old, started walking five miles every day. Now she's 91 and we don't know where she is. <laughs> we laugh, but the number one limiting belief that holds us back from accomplishing our goals is focusing in on a future outcome instead of on the present process 
starting right where we are right now. So the key question that we must answer at the beginning of every day is where are you physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally? Noting that they're all connected and interdependent, continuously interfacing with one another, and that the perspective we have on each of them will determine the level of our performance for the day. How do I know? Imagine, if you will, that instead of walking into this ballroom today, you walk onto an American football field with huge dreams as a projected number one draft pick by the Oakland Raiders into the National Football League. But within 30 minutes, your dreams are shattered, your heart's broken by a paralyzing injury that cuts short your football career. That's what happened to me. One day in a tackling drill, coach blew the whistle go, and another player and I ran full speed into each other in a violent head-on collision, smashing my shoulder into the cutting edge of my fiberglass pads, and we slammed to the ground. When Lyle got off of me, I had compressed my neck, I'd severed the axillary nerve in my right deltoid muscle, and suffered a grade two concussion. My eye drooped, my speech slurred, which momentarily returned, but my arm stayed, my right side stayed totally numb and my arm dangled helplessly at my side, leaving me paralyzed for 14 months, both physically and emotionally. I went to 16 doctors, 15 of whom told me I would not recover. I would never get any better. Have any of you ever heard that? What happens if you believe it? You never get any better. And my life spiraled downward until I hit what I thought was rock bottom. Yes, I fought my way back to a 95% recovery, but sitting in the sounds of silence at 17 miles above the earth took me back to the sounds of silence in the hospital where I felt all alone in a crowded room and lonely in a loved one's arms. And I wondered if I have lived every lesson I learned. For example, why did I go to so many different doctors? I now realized I kept going from doctor to doctor until I found one who believed I would get better, who explained that knowledge is power, but it has no heart. We don't learn to know, we learn to do. Knowledge doesn't change behavior. Behavior changes behavior, which is created by our belief that it is not enough to say, I will do my best. We must succeed in doing that which is necessary. And because this was such a critical part of my recovery, may I pause for a minute to acknowledge that there may be somebody here who is hurting as badly as I was, who's lost your job, who's gone through a devastating divorce, battling PTS from a traumatic experience, where you've lost your identity like I did, and you actually think you've hit rock bottom. With all due respect, may I remind all of us that no matter how bad it gets, nobody ever hits rock bottom. We hit rock foundation. We hit rock belief. We hit the baseline core values and governing principles on which we were raised. And even if your current belief is strong and deep enough, if you're still struggling to get better, maybe it's because you're asking the wrong questions like I did, which is why the second element in my art of significance process is refinement of our passionate purpose. You see, I was asking the doctors how to get better when I should have been asking myself why. And once we answer why, figuring out the how to becomes clear and simple. When we only focus on the what and the how, we only engage the brain. But when we add to that a, a passionate why and a compelling want, we connect the head with the heart, which causes our blood to pump more rapidly, our brains to fire, and our muscles to magnify. Yes, reason leads to conclusions, but it is emotion that leads to action. No pain, no gain really means no heart, no chance that nothing happens to us, everything happens for us, which makes my football injury one of the very best things that's ever happened for me. Not my paralysis, but who I became because of it. <clears throat> I thought I was a football player when in reality, that's just what I did, not who I am as a man. 
And when we identify ourselves in terms of what we do instead of who we are, we become human doings instead of human beings. Unacceptable if we want to achieve the level beyond success, which we call significance. You see, successful people get what they want. Significant individuals want what we get so we don't die with our music still in us. Let me repeat this. Successful people get what they think they want focused on what matters at the moment. But significant individuals want what we get by focusing on what matters most, which is what lasts the longest, so we don't die with regrets with our intentions and music still in us. Suddenly, my U-2 commander started pushing us up to a higher altitude, which in this mindset is why the third element in my art of significance process is transformation through quantum improvement, knowing that if we just fix something, it becomes what it was. But when we improve something, it becomes what it has the potential to be. Let me explain by sharing a recent experience I had working with the professional football team. Challenged with the task to take 53 elite athletes who collectively represent over $208 million in annual salary to a higher level. What would you have said to them? The good news is the same thing that motivates them motivates you and me, expectations. So in a team meeting, I ask a captain and an assistant coach to come to the front of the room and hold the ends of a broomstick so it's suspended 12 inches off the floor. And ahead of time, I get the name of the most gifted and talented player on the team who can jump 38 inches high. And at no surprise, he's sitting in the back of the room, so I ask him to help me out. And in a slow, cocky walk, he struts to the front of the room where I engage him. Hey, do you think you can jump over this 12-inch high broomstick? He glares at me and refuses to move, so I change the question. Will you jump over this 12-inch high broomstick? Grinning sarcastically, he skips over the bar and stares me down again. And here's where the teaching begins. Why did you only jump 12 inches high when you and your coaches and teammates know you can jump 38 inches high? And his answer was epic because that's all you asked me to do. How high is your bar? People see you jumping over it every day, but only you know how high it should be. Only you know if you're giving it everything you've got when less would be sufficient. Not because it's expected by others, but because it's demanded of ourselves, knowing that we don't compete against others, we compete against what we're capable of. Because under pressure, we don't rise to the occasion, we fall to, to the level of our training. That's why we train and practice so hard to improve every day one quantum inch at a time. And then we landed. And at the end of this five-hour intrepid excursion, I realized that although this space adventure created an unusual environment wherein I could conduct a self-audit that changed my perspective forever, you don't have to put on a spacesuit to redefine what's possible. You simply need to create your own quiet space here on Earth and tune into your own still small voice of intuition that will uplevel your perspective so you can live that life you dream about as a master of the art of significance. And how do I know? In the sounds of silence at 17 miles up, it was clear. Sure is a lot of wasted space if we're the only ones here. From space, you see heaven and earth are connected. Environment matters and should be protected. Religion's for those scared of hell and beware. Spirituality's for those of us who have already been there. If your glass is half filled or half spilled, it's perspective, but it's always refillable when we're introspective. Awareness refinement brings new transformation. Though paralyzed, we'll rise with a why explanation. Success is to get what we want, unfulfilling. Significant want what we get through our giving. Raising our bar with our mind open wide, 
refusing to die with their music inside. And because of this shared perspective, my friends, I like me best when I'm with you. I wanna see you again.